Um, okay, we're going to talk about asthma um, and, and why it is a concern. It, it, it is on the increase in our community and it's coming through more and more in our children. Um, and there's a lot of theories behind why that happens. Um, now within asthmatic, there are three uh, mechanisms that occur. With the, and and um, the first one is that uh, whatever, for whatever reason, whatever the, the stimulus it is that, that causes it to happen, um, is that the muscles within the airways actually start to go into a spasm. So within the, within the, the finer uh, airways, they actually go into a spasm. The second thing that happens is because the airway is being um, irritated, irritated by, by something, um, the, way that the, the way that that tissue will respond is that it swells up. So not only are the muscles now in a spasm and they're closing, and closing up, but also they're now swelling up as well. And also because it is the lungs, the way that it, it defends itself against anything that's an irritant is it produces mucus. So now the poor asthmatic not only has to breathe through an airway that's in a spasm and it's narrower than normal, but they've also got to breathe through all this excess mucus. So the sorts of things that we get with an asthmatic is that they all have a shortness of breath. Um, they may have audible wheeze, and by that I mean maybe a wheeze that you can hear when you're talking to them, but it's not always there. Um, they can, um, they, they'll have shortness of breath, they can be gasping for air as well. Um, they may be down to one word sentences. Um, they can become quite pale around the skin, um, blue around the lips, and they'll feel this tightness in their chest. Um, the thing with all these signs symptoms is if you draw them, <coughs> you may actually miss what's going on with them, but the main ones are that they will be short of breath and they'll feel this tightness in the chest. So what we do um, is we use um, a, de um, a device similar to this, and this is a Bethlehem inhaler, it's a beautiful inhaler. Um, they are generally this colour, they're either a grey or a blue colour, um, but there are a lot of inhalers out there. So, you know, there's red ones, brown ones, green ones, purple ones, you name it, the orange ones, they're all, they're all out there. And they all have different, different purposes and, and, and um, requirements. Um, some of those are preventers, so it's a steroid-based inhaler that they take in the morning or in the afternoon, just to settle that inflammation down. Um, and some are a mixture of a reliever medication and a preventive medication. But the reliever medication is this colour or a blue colour. So grey or blue. Very good. Okay, so um, now what happens with some asthmatics? Um, in the moment, in the panic or whatever, um, they may not take this properly. And so as a first aid, you can actually assist them with their medication, their medication, right? So give it a bit of a shake. Okay. Um, sit the sit the carefully up or stand them up. You'll generally find someone who's in a severe asthma attack will actually be leaning on a hard surface. They arch their back. They'll drop their chest to try and make that chest volume a little bit larger. Okay. Now, if you can remember four, you'll remember this treatment. So you give it a shake. This goes into the mouth, right? Tell them to breathe out and then breathe in. As they breathe in, and they get and you get them to hold their breath for four seconds. One, two, three. Four, and then breathe out. Okay? Go again. One, two, three, four, then breathe out. Again, and then a fourth time. So four inhalations, one at a time, and hold the breath for four seconds. Okay? Now after that, you wait four minutes. If there is no improvement, you do it again. Okay? Another four, hold the breath for four seconds. Wait another four minutes. If, um, again, if it doesn't work, you go in. Um, you can overdose on Ventolin, um, and what it does is it will make their pulse rate uh, race, um, and they can feel a little bit anxious. So it's very, very important. This person will be distressed, okay? So that they can't breathe, we would all be distressed if we can't breathe. So talk to them, everything's gonna be fine, we're here, help us on the way, and those sorts of things. So it's very important to keep the situation under control. So that's the inhaler. Now, this other device, which is a bit old, but this other device is called a spacer, um, and this is a more efficient way of actually delivering uh, ventilin, uh, or this thing. Um, the problem is they're quite bulky, so they don't sort of fit in your back pocket. So you'll generally find asthmatics won't carry these with them, um, but they are brilliant, especially for children, because it's so easy to use. Um, again, all you need to remember for this particular uh, protocol or method is just pause, okay? So what happens is, um, take the cap off. What happens is this bit goes into the mouth of the casualty and this, this, little, this little device just plugs into the end there. It has a little 
one-way flow valve so they can actually breathe in and out through it. So, what you do is, again, you get them to relax, you can spray it there, that goes into their mouth, okay, and they breathe through this four deep breaths, in and out through that tube, okay, go again, in and out four times through the tube, go a third time, in and out through the tube again, and then you go a fourth time, okay. Um, the, um, the vapor stays uh, in the column a lot better, a lot more, uh, a lot more efficiently, and they get more into the lungs. Um, again, wait four minutes. If there's no improvement, you go again, go again, go again. So that's the that's the practice for uh, asthma. Um, are there any questions on either of these? The question was, what's the maximum number of puffs that you can give a person? Um, According to the Australian Association Council, Council guidelines, and that's what I'm, I'm teaching, is that you just continue to, to um, you just keep continuing to give those puffs. Um, there are other organisations out there like the Asthma Council, and they've got their own protocols. But what I'm teaching now is Australian Association Council guidelines. What's the uh, legal ramifications of me having one of those in my first aid kit? I'm in the bush. Can I supply my own, or should they have brought their own? Um, as I said, there, is a, there are side effects to this, and predominantly it is that they will have that racing heart rate and, and those sorts of things. Um, if someone is an asthmatic, they should really be carrying their own with them. Um, in an emergency, I guess you can use it. This is a, a pharmacy prescribed medica a pharmacy uh, medication um, in any case, so you can only get it over the counter. Um, there really is not too many bad side effects from this. Um, but you need to make sure that when you're giving it, you're giving it appropriately for that. Thank you.